I think the technical problems will be ongoing. Um, so maybe I'll just talk about what I've done. Um, I okay. often work with... Do you want to use the mic? Okay, sorry. Um, I often work with animals um, and more specifically the relationships between animals and humans. Um, so for this project I wanted to work with uh, greyhound trainers in Bakers Hill um, and a greyhound track out in Northern. Um, and I thought it was a good uh, opportunity in that way to look at a, a, a relationship uh, like this, which is essentially a form of uh, farming, I guess, um, where the trainers um, yeah, uh, produce these animals and, um, and then uh, conduct them in this in this industry. So thinking about the space theme of local and global, um, it was I was in, I was interested in the the sort of local local community and the uh, local animals that made this industry possible, and the sort of gap between that and the huge uh, industry of the TAB that um, that yeah that they were part of. Um, so. Yeah, I um, worked with somebody called Bill Chules, who um, ended up being a really, really great friend. Um, okay, back on. Um, I don't think it's really going to work, which is uh, most unfortunate. Um, so, Bill, yeah, I started, I started by going to the track um, out at Northern. They run every Monday. Um, and I, met with, I saw Bill there and he sort of stood out as this quite popular figure. Um, down there. So I eventually started going around to his um, training yard um, in Bakers Hill and he told me a lot of different stories about the greyhound industry and um, his favourite was the year he won the Perth Cup um, with a rank outsider and basically all, many of the other greyhounds have been knocked out of the way and his came through and um, won at the end. But he he sort of had I really liked the names that he had for his dogs. Uh, one of them was Optimism, and it, it you know, quite frequently lost. And um, <laughs> I, I just really enjoyed that. And he told me um, to keep an eye out for a dog called Costly Obsession, which was another name that seemed um, appropriate for this game. So for quite a few weeks, I was following that dog, and that dog did do very well. And some of the stuff I was hoping to show you is. Sort of um, tracking that, but um, yeah. So from the relationship with Bill, I learned a lot about the industry. Um, but to get access to the track where I wanted to do the filming, I um, met a guy called Vince Karuna, who he runs the the Greyhound track. He actually built it himself um, about 25 years ago, and he's a volunteer and does a lot of work on race days and um, he, was, he was really great. He became a really good friend as well and gave me access to produce the works basically. So um, I guess from there it was a, uh, yeah, a process of filming, filming each week and uh, trying to put cameras in different positions at the track. Um, so I did that for the remaining six weeks and then um, had a show in Northern. And um, Bruce from the Avon Valley Arts Centre, is he, he was a great character as well and he's who I was hoping to have <laughs> um, here today. He, he helped me uh, do that show and then a modification of that show is what's shown downstairs here. For a um, so I don't know if... Hopefully everyone has seen that work and I can um, talk about that work. Um, so, so if we can. Okay, it's really not going to work. Um, there we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
doesn't look like that on my <laughs> Yeah. Um, yes, no, it's a real shame because all of my works are, are video works and then I represented them um, in coloured boxes uh, that reference the colours that the dogs always run in. So in the original Northern show there was eight of these boxes and uh, the bibs that the greyhounds run in are in the same colour system and I set it up around the room with uh, eight, eight videos. For this version that I've swapped the order around and changed it um, to five. But yeah, they're all sort of in different states of being open and closed. So they reference the gates that they jump out of um, at the track and they're also placed in the room uh, in a way that references the TOB um, with some up high and, uh, and with information sort of beaming down on you and then other, other ones where you're, where you're down low. So I've tried to manipulate uh, the audience a little bit with, with this installation and sort of the gate over the door when you come in. So you have to um, go, go down and sort of then get released out into the space. Um, what else can I say about that? Also, it's sort of a lot of the, the bright colour is about to me how you experience colour in the landscape and particularly when you're driving and um, I saw a lot of links between that and when you're at the northern track so it's quite often a dull sort of very muted environment and then it gets interrupted with these uh, bright clashes of colour and um, so forth. Yeah. Um, not sure what else to say. Is there any can I take questions maybe about the project? <laughs> yep, okay. Um, yeah, well I guess I wanted to find out something different about that. So the, how it works, I, Northam is one community track um, and together all the community tracks feed the big system of the TAB. So it's set up that they run um, every sort of three or four minutes apart so they can keep people um, gambling and, and, and running in that way. Um, so the, I sort of thought of, began to think of it as two different things, the, this, this giant industry that is obviously quite cruel to the dogs and um, has, you know, there's a lot of gambling victims, but then also this local community that, that run this local track for very different reasons than that. And um, a lot of it's volunteer and I encountered a lot of genuine love for the dogs so to me it was kind of a strange um, juxtaposition that existed or a, a strange blindness to what the activity is overall I guess. Um, I did. I did encounter that. Um, I, I was. I was quite fearful of that. That people would be very protective of um, their sort of industry secrets, and that they would think I was trying to expose the, the cruelty of the greyhound industry, which wasn't my. Um, you know that that isn't the the focus of that activity. But I found that um, that people were actually very very welcoming and became slowly quite interested in what I was doing, particularly in the track. I mean, for the first few weeks, there's, like, there's a little bit of footage where someone's like, oh, what else is the camera doing there? And um, people were watching me and uh, didn't want me to interrupt the result of the race. But over time, um, when, once I sort of told the story of what I was doing, people yeah, were very interested and very helpful.
Yeah. situations that I that, that I um, encountered and the people that I met but I just I, I guess I thought it wasn't my role to um, oh, no. pass judgment on that um, I guess yeah Bill he his favorite dog was not a greyhound it was his other border collie that he had but he still had two sets of names they had a race name and he knew every dog out of 40 odd dogs quite personally and knew, um, you know, he knew uh, those animals back to front and could do sort of different demonstrations and um, I think he really, he understood them and, and, and cared for them but he was still involved in this context that is um, abusive to those, to those dogs. So it was just something I wanted to learn about um, taking into account what I, what I already knew about it. Okay. Okay.